Hi everyone, so today's video is a really, really long one. It might just be the longest video that I've ever put up. In fact, I think it is, but it's a makeup declutter slash clear out slash organization. And I've already filmed it. It was actually an hour unedited. I've managed to get it down to around 25 minutes. And it basically turns into a current makeup collection and everyday makeup collection. And there's really not that much stuff that I actually get rid of. So I've kind of had to rethink this video a bit. I still want it to be helpful for you guys. So I will throw in my top three organizational tips that I followed when I went through this. My number one tip is to get everything out. So as I went through each drawer of my makeup collection, I got everything out so you can see it and it's just good to see it all laid flat so you can realize just what a makeup hoarder you are. My second tip would be to think of expiry dates. There's actually a blog post from my friend Meg that I always like refer back to. I will link it down below for you. But that just has all the expiry dates for different types of products. And just kind of go with like smell and texture and kind of swatch things, give things a good sniff. And if they don't smell right, then you don't really want to be putting it anywhere near like your eyes and lips and face so in the bin and the third thing I do is just try to be realistic at the end of the day I have one face there's only so much makeup you can put on your face in a day and although some products I love and I really enjoy using and I like I know that there's a friend or family member of mine that can give it a better home so sometimes I just go through and I'm like yeah my sister would look so much better in that than I will so it's time to move a few things along so that was a very brief tips and tricks little section but I just thought I'd get onto the video because it is very long if you're gonna have a Sunday nap throw this on, you'll be asleep in about 10 minutes time. And if you wanna see how I store my everyday makeup collection and also my big makeup storage, I will link those videos both down below and up here for you throughout the video because I won't bore you with that for the 10 millionth time. <laughs> and this is the contents of my primers and sprays and all my foundations from like low coverage to high coverage and I'm looking at it and I don't think there's that much that I want to get rid of I feel like everything here is kind of in date there might be a few things obviously the Becca backlight priming filter is going back in the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray there actually isn't that much of that left so I probably should just use that up Chanel's lovely all of these are lovely maybe let me have a sniff of the Laura Mercier hydrating primer because that might be a bit grim Although that feels okay, it does actually smell a bit funky and on the back it says the expiry date is after six months. And I have used quite a lot of that so I think that is going to have to go. The Tarte Luminous Dewy Skin Mist, oh my god, love that. I think I'm going to have to put that in a pile to put in my everyday makeup. Maybe I'll take that and the Urban Decay and put those aside to go in my everyday makeup stuff. The L'Oreal Nude Magique Cushion, I feel like I might give this to a friend because the colour that I've already got is really really good. The colour number one is a bit pale for me so I might pass that on to my sister. It Cosmetics, oh, the cutest little diddiest thing. The YSL, I need to get back into that. That's a really, really great formula. Then I've got the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, and I've actually got that in two colours, in number four and number six. Number six is definitely, like, a shade that's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit deep for me, but it's a really good one to have to mix with other foundations if ever I need to. Light Wonder I Love, Chanel Vitalimia Aqua in two colours. I've got to keep that. The Estee Lauder Double Wear Light, I haven't used this in a really long time, and I feel like it might just be a bit matte for me. There's definitely a bit of a question mark by that, but it's a really nice one to wear over the winter when you don't want to look so like shiny and juicy, so I might keep that for that. I don't get a lot of use from the Makeup Forever Ultra HD, hmm. But then it is one of those products that people use online all the time, and I feel like I might get give us away regret if I give that one away. And um, this one can definitely go, this is the Estee Lauder Perfectionist Youth Infusing Makeup, and I think the date on it is, it says two years, and I feel like I probably have had it for longer than that. It's a great formula, you can see I've practically used most of it up anyway but oh 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 yeah that smells really funky so that's going to go in the bin but I got a decent amount of use out of that and then the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer I always go back to that so this back in the box so this is the contents of my powder and concealers drawer and there's not really too much going on in here I like these powders it's the MAC mineralized skin finish one this one is in the shade light plus but I also use medium quite a lot as well so gonna keep that and the bourgeois is a really good one for when I want to look a bit more matte because the MAC still has a bit of sheen in it so both of those definitely keeping. Then the NARS creamy concealer I repurchased this recently and I have to say it is so drying on my skin I much prefer the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer so I think I might give this to my sister she's a little bit greasier and also a little bit paler than me and I think that'll be a really good match for her right now. Uh, the Urban Decay What's this called? The Double Wear Stay In Place is an incredible concealer. I've hit pan in that 
absolutely love that so definitely keeping that definitely keeping the urban decay the dior it's this is like a neutralizer thing with little green end it's really nice to have it's the only product i really own like that so definitely going to keep that this is the dior fix it concealer in light beige really not a fan of this i find it very chalky and very heavy so gonna give that away to a friend i've kept this for ages it's the l'oreal perfect match concealer and the funny thing is that on me it just isn't a perfect match i find that it's a bit too yellowy. I think this can be given a better home. And then the YSL Touche Eclair. I love it and it says all lights on me. Very cute. Not something I use every day but really good for days when I'm super hungover and super baggy under the eyes. <laughs> So these are all my bronzers and highlighters and blushes and also a few contour products as well and I have got a few palettes to show you in this drawer as well it's quite a quite a busy drawer so we'll go through those in a bit now bronzer wise I really like this one it's the Chanel I think it's called the Le Beige powder but it's in the shade 40 and actually it's a really really nice bronzer on my skin tone and then also the Too Faced chocolate bronzer is a great one it's a little bit paler if you look at the difference there, this is more of a summertime bronzer for me, that's more of a winter one. And then I find that the Makeup Forever, it's kind of somewhere in the middle, sort of somewhere in the middle of that, and I really like the tone of this one. So I'm going to keep all of those three. And actually, the L'Oreal Glam Bronze Cushion de Soleil is really nice. I really enjoy using the foundation version of it, but it is quite strong, like you really need a very, very light hand. And I do have a cream bronzer in this. So I feel like I can get rid of this and I've still got a cream bronzer on hand. So I think I'm gonna pass this on to a mate. So definitely keeping these three bronzer wise. I just had the realization that all of my highlighters are from Becca. So here I've got Moonstone. I can't believe I don't have this in my everyday makeup at the moment. I think I'm gonna to have to put that in the everyday makeup pile because I just love it. You can see it's very well used. Champagne Pop is definitely much richer and a bit more pinky. Like when you see them together, this has more of like a pinky golden tone, whereas that's a bit more yellow. So I think I'm going to keep that aside for now, but that's always really nice to wear on holiday. And then this is Champagne Pop in the liquid form. I love having that because it's just really nice to mix in with things. I should probably keep that actually in my primary drawer because I'm more likely to use that mixed in. So I will move that to a different drawer. And then here I've got the poured versions of Champagne Pop and then Moonstone as well. Ooh, Moonstone is very well used. Blusher wise, I really don't own that many. This Max Factor one is a really good all rounder as is this Too Faced one. This is Baby Love. I think my friend Sandra gave me this one. I really like that. And also, I will always love you. Oh, they're really hard to open. But that's a great peach. That's a great pink. Tarte Exposed will forever be one of my favorite blush shades. I've had this for years, used it a ton, and still it looks like I haven't even like touched the top. And then Clinique Melon Pop is probably my favorite, favorite blusher right now and has been for like the last year. And I think I'm gonna put that in the pile of in my everyday makeup. Is that Moonstone? No, that's Champagne Pop, Moonstone. There you go, these two are definitely going in there. And then I've got the Kevin Aquan, the Sculpting Powder in the shade Light. Now personally, I use the shade Medium. The Medium is in my everyday makeup right now, but this is really good to have just in case I do friends makeup or my sisters or I'm feeling really super lazy with fake tan and haven't used it in a while. Then this is an Hourglass palette that they recently released. And in here there's a cream bronzer, a cream blush, a cream highlight. I think I'm gonna take this on holiday with me. It's a very good travel palette. And I like creamy textures every now and again. It's kind of nice to have them all in one. And then this is the Hourglass glass ambient lighting powder in dim light I picked this up from Sephora how cute is that miniature and then these are my other cheap palettes I've got the hourglass ambient lighting edit I really love that one and then this I think is just the ambient lighting palette so this is great for setting powder I tend to use this more in the winter and that's just a really nice palette to have like how pretty also the Charlotte Tilbury look in a palette I definitely need to get more use out of that because that cost me a small fortune <laughs> and then this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills contour the cream contour palette and although it's not something I use every day it's something that every now and again I get the urge to use and it's kind of nice to have the option of doing a cream contour if I really want to go all out so all of these staying too so this is everything to do with eyes aside from eyeshadow palettes I'll go through those next they're in a separate drawer but here I've got my mascaras I've got some eyebrow products I've got eyeshadow sticks eyeliners and then also some eyeshadows in here so I'm going to start and go along the Lancome Hypnos Waterproof Mascara. I feel like with these, I'm just gonna have to have a sniff. Mm, that smells a bit funky. I feel like I have had this for longer. Yeah, all of these are gonna be six months basically, so if I've had them open for longer than six months, then they really should go. Love you Lancome, but it's time to go. The Dior Show Iconic Overcurl Waterproof. I love this mascara. I love, 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 love it. But I can tell that this needs to go because when I open it, you know, and it's like really gross to open and it has dried up. 
a lot. And again, that smells really funky, but I would highly recommend this mascara. I think it's an awesome one. Lash food is great, and I haven't had it that long, so that's going back in. The Telescopic Shocking Extensions, mm, yeah, I've definitely had this for a very, very long time. In fact, not even much comes out on the brush right now, so yeah, that one's time to go. The Marc Jacobs, mm, I love this one. I haven't had that for that long. I feel like I can keep that for a bit longer. And this Fairy Drops one, I only opened the other day, and I loved, loved, loved it again. I kind of fell back in love with it, and I was like, why haven't I used this in forever? So I think I'm going to put that in my pile to go back into my everyday makeup bag. The Hair and Make Long and Curl Mascara, oh my god, I've had this for over a year. I think I just need to stop being lazy, pick it up off of Amazon, so yeah, that one's gonna go, but definitely on my shopping list to repurchase. There's like flaking all over here. <laughs> and then this is a By Terry sample, I've had this for quite a while as well. Great sample, it's the Mascara Terribly. Really nice mascara, it's a growth booster as well. The NYX Tinted Brown Mascara is awesome. I've got a lot of use out of that. And then these are all of my eye pencils. And so the Charlotte Tilbury ones just have to stay. This is the Barbarella Brown, and then this is the Navy Blue. Oh, the Navy Blue! Marlene Midnight, God, I haven't used that in so long. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Definitely need to use that again in the winter. Is there any more Charlotte Tilbury going on? No, just those. Then the By Terry, oh, they're so good. I've got Misty Rock, and this one is Brown Perfection, I think it's called. I thought this would happen with this one. I think it's kind of broken off, but I love the colour so much. But to be fair, it's kind of mangled, and if it's broken, and I can't actually use it, maybe it's time to say goodbye to that. And actually, the Estee Edit, the edgiest cull in the shade Spiced. I wouldn't say it's a good alternative for the By Terry, because the By Terry is more of like a deep brown, but this is more of like a burnished amber kind of colour, and it is very pretty, so... I'm gonna shove that one in there. I like keeping this Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter in Midnight Cowboy. It's really not my style, but every now and again I fancy using a bit of glitter, so it's quite nice to have that. And then here are some, oh, the eyebrow marker. Is that still working or is it dried out? Now I'm just painting my whole hand with it. Yep, it's still there. The H&M eyeliners are really nice. I like the Chanel ones too. That's another H&M one that's going in, the CQ one. This is in the shade Bordeaux, and it's a really pretty, like, plummy colour. But I just do not get a lot of use out of that. Definitely need to use that more in the winter. Oh my god, the Tom Ford <laughs> Eye Defining Pen. Yes, look at that. I only have one liquid eyeliner, and it's this. You just don't need anything else once you've got this in your life. Oh. It's so beautiful. Max Factor Excess Intensity Longwear Eyeliner. It's a nice brown, quite similar to the Charlotte Tilbury, but it's always good to have a brown eyeliner. And then the Rimmel Scandalize. I've had this for so long. I've definitely had this for longer than 30 months. So I think I might put this in my bin pile because I'm a bit funny about using expired things around the eyes. It's just a bit grim, but I will repurchase this because this is just like the best nude eyeliner that there is in the drugstore. Now over here, I've got my surgical tape, keeping that. This is all that remains from my MAC palette. I actually have one of the 15 pan palettes and one of the palettes that I've kept, I'm gonna show you from Zoeva, is practically just a dupe for every single one. So I passed them on and now I've just got these left and it is all the glitters. I'm pretty sure that's Sable, Sober, Antiqued. They're like the only four that I need. This Charlotte Tilbury palette, the Dolce Vita, it's the first one that I got and I just think it's the best one. This Estee Lauder Pure Color in Chained, really nice color. I think that's Mirage from Chanel, Tom Ford Spiced, and then this is the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow in Bronze Taupe. Amelia bought this for me years ago when she came back from America, and I love it. It's still probably my favorite taupe that there is. So I think I've actually gone through this drawer quite recently, so there's not really that much in terms of eyeshadow to get rid of. So I think I'm going to leave it there. So these are all of my palettes, and at one point I had an absolute ton of palettes, like they were coming out of my ear rolls. I really didn't need any more, because palettes are just so shiny and beautiful and I can't stop myself from buying them. But I do think there's maybe like one or two that I can get rid of here. There's a even new Spectrum one I love. This is the one that I was talking about that's basically just MAC dupes, like all the way through. I even showed this to my sister the other day, and she was like, oh, that's like MAC so-and-so, that's like MAC so-and-so. I would just say, get this palette. It just has all of the best MAC shades in, and really beautiful, like, Buttery formulas as well, not too much kickback, so definitely keeping that. And the Coco Blend as well is a gorgeous, gorgeous one. Someone mentioned that it could be a good dupe for the Modern Renaissance palette by Anastasia, and I haven't done the two side by side, but it's got really pretty warm tones in. Lorac, oh my god, I went absolutely nuts when I managed to get my hands on this palette. 
it's really beautiful. I really like this one, so definitely keeping that. And the Naked palette, for me, is just the best and the original. I mean, look at that, so nice. The Vizart Matte palette, I very much enjoy. This Bobbi Brown one, I'm not sure I've shown you guys before. I showed this on Snapchat recently. This is one of their palettes with all of the concealers on one side and then all of the foundations on the other side. And you can see, it doesn't get much use. But I purchased it a while ago now, just because it's really handy to have in case I ever need to do friends and family's makeup. And then the one that I think I can get rid of is the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. I love this palette. I think it's really great, but actually in terms of contour right now, all I tend to use is my Kevin Aquan or maybe the Anastasia if I'm feeling really fancy, and this just doesn't get the use. I'm not giving it a good home. I feel like one of my friends could give it a better home, and they won't mind that. I've used this colour quite a lot. It's really, really pretty, but like I said, definitely don't get as much use out of it as I should, so sorry, love. Time to go. So these were my lipsticks, lip glosses, lip liners, and then liquid and kind of really super matte lipsticks. And I have to say, I will give these a little clean because they're looking a bit grim with kind of all the flaky lipstick bits inside of them. And you can see I don't have too much going on over here because I feel like I did go through them quite recently, but Charlotte Tilbury, very Victoria, what a shade, definitely keeping that. This is from Kiko, and this is from a, like a limited edition ages ago. This is their Ace of Diamond lipstick in the shade 27. Do you remember this colour? I went mad for it, and I just can't seem to get rid of it because I feel like it's the perfect raspberry shade. Then I've got Unique Melon Pop, that's one of my favourite like peachy pinks. Matte Velvet Teddy, that's a fab colour that I go back to a lot in the winter. Nars Barbarella is a very sheer peach. I've got Mare Patisserie and Ruby Woo, so this is like my red. If I want a red, that's what I go for. So I feel like lipstick wise, there's not really anything I can get rid of there. I'm quite happy with what I've got. Then onto liners and lip gloss. Obviously I've got one of my Clarins in there. This is in the shade 05, I love that one. And then for liners, I've got a Gwen Stefani one. This is a Kevin Aquan one, which is a really good nude. And then I've got MAC Ruby Woo, MAC Beat, and then MAC Saw. Do you remember MAC Beat? Oh, I love this one. This is like such a pretty raspberry colour. Oh, love it. All right, let's get into this. Because I mentioned in my most recent blog post, I'm kind of out of the matte lip thing at the moment. My lips are just feeling a bit like a cat's ass and they need a bit of moisture. There's probably some that I could get rid of here. Let's have a little look. The NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencils, I absolutely love. I mean, just look at them, seriously. I really do enjoy collecting them, I enjoy wearing them. This shade is amazing, Bahama. Or maybe I should put that in my everyday makeup. So that is a really, mm, I'm gonna put that in my everyday makeup pile because I should get more wear out of that. Train Blur is a wicked shade for the winter. Damned is probably my favorite color out of all of them. Dragon Girls are really pretty red. Cruella, well need I say anymore. Red Square is the most used out of all of them. <laughs> That's like a little nub. I think I might be able to pass this one on to a better home. This is Iberico. Iberico? Iberico. It came as part of a limited edition set at winter and actually it's a little bit orange. Like it's a bit too orange for me. I definitely got some friends that I would look better on and I'm sure they won't mind that I swatched it on the back of my hand. So I think that's going to go into my giveaway pile. And then actually with the liquid lipsticks, I feel quite happy with what I've got here. I mean, maybe this one is a bit similar to this. I might give them a little swatch. Um, Morocco is fab from NYX. It is very orangey, but very pretty. And then from Kat Von D, I just have this one now. This is Outlaw, and to me it's just the best red. I, I thought the Sephora one was better, but actually I prefer the Kat Von D. This is the Jouer one that I really like. And then Can and Stockholm. Oh, you know what? Stockholm is going in the everyday pile. I don't know how that's found its way in here. I should be wearing that every day. I love it. So this is the Stila Stay All Day in Rico, and then this is the NYX one in Copenhagen. Oh, very different. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can justify having those both. This is the drawer that I label new things, which is basically things I've been sent or I've purchased recently, and I kind of just throw it in there as like the holding area before I put it in its proper home, put it in its proper place. So I've let this get a bit outrageous. This is like a good couple of weeks slash months of things that need to find a home. So obviously the Clarins, I really like all of these. I do enjoy the red. I think the red maybe could find a better home with somebody else, but the orange and the pink I really enjoy, so maybe the red will be going in my giveaway pile, but these two definitely keeping. L'Oreal French Girl Hair Messy Cliche. I saw this and was like, yes, I need to give that a go, so I will put that with all my hair care stuff. 
definitely with this as well, the Mermaid Hair Shampoo and Conditioner. This Marc Jacobs Pink Nail Polish is very pretty, but pink isn't really 100% my thing, so I'm gonna pass that on to a mate. For the Zentan, I just need to find a day of the week where I can find like Mark in a good enough mood that he will help <laughs> me fake tan my back, but I really wanna try this. The Transformation Ultra Weekly Self Tan. I'll let you know how that goes. The Modern Renaissance Palette, you guys know that I love. I think I'm gonna put this in my everyday makeup kind of pile, but I'm not sure if it will fit in, but I'm gonna try and squeeze it in, because I do really enjoy that. And then, oh, actually though, this, the Chanel Eyeshadow Palette, which is absolutely gorgeous. I think I might do a little swap these, yeah. I will put this with the rest of my palettes. These are gorgeous, these YSL Rouge Volupte Shines. I've used them before. They are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Maybe this one, 47. That's the pretty kind of sheer, sheeny mauve. That's gonna go in my everyday makeup. These will go with my lipsticks. Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair in travel size, love. The Sesh V Instant Gel Effect Top Coat. Has anybody tried this? I've only just ever tried the original, but I saw this in Boots the other day next to the original, and I was like, hmm, gonna have to give that a go. The Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I really like this. Definitely gonna pop that in the drawer somewhere. And I think this, the Cover FX. Custom Enhancer Drops, so pretty. This is in the shade Celestial. I used this in my first impressions video the other week, and I said in that that it just felt a little bit Tin Man on me. It felt a little bit too, like you can see the color there, it's a little bit too silvery. And actually, I've got two more shades to try here. This is Sunlight and Candlelight. So I think Celestial is gonna go in my giveaway pile. Let's have a quick little swatch. Candlelight is there, and Sunlight is there. Oh, Sunlight is so pretty. Candlelight is gorgeous, but I feel like that'd be better on my friends with more of like a tan skin. It looks really nice as an eyeshadow on me, but I feel like this one, Sunlight, is definitely gonna be, oh, oh God, I didn't put the thing on properly. So I think Candlelight will go to a mate, Sunlight I'm gonna keep and put in my everyday makeup pile. I love this little quarterly spritz, and these two bits from Chanel are lovely, and I will put them in their respective homes. This Clarins SPF 50 is fab, definitely gonna use that on holiday. And then this Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Concentrated Recovery Power Foil Mask. I just don't like these masks, I'm really not keen. Now I've tried these um, dry masks. I can't remember the name of them for the life of me. I'll put it here if I remember it. They are so much more comfortable to wear on the skin. I always find these like getting my hair and I'm not too keen. So I'm gonna pass those on. This Clarins Balm is beautiful. I think I'm gonna pop this in like my everyday kind of handbag just so I can take that with me on the go. And then these two bits from Chanel, I absolutely adore. I've actually done a post on them, so I'll link that down below if you wanna check it out. But yeah, that is everything. So onto the everyday makeup. This is what I've currently got going on. I'm gonna start with primer, and the primer I'm definitely gonna keep in the box is the Too Faced Hangover RX. I just love it. I've used this spray a ton, and I really wanna give the Tatcha and the Urban Decay a go, so I think this is gonna go back in my kind of big stash, and then this is gonna go in the everyday box. I have been using the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow, but I think I'm gonna pop that back in my big drawers and just leave it with those like primers and sprays. And then for foundation, oh my God, the It Cosmetics Your Skin Better, like look how much I've used that. The Your Skin Better CC Cream, and then the L'Oreal Nude Magique Cushion, which is looking quite battered. I think I used this in the shade number three, and then for concealer, still my Urban Decay Naked Skin. Now these three things are things I wanted to add in, so I've got the Cover FX, the Clinique Blush, and then the Becca Moonstone. I've been using a lot of the Filmstar Bronze and Glow, but I think I'm gonna take that out and just pop in these three bits if I can. So the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Medium. This is the Cover FX, the like liquid bronzer one. I think it's in Sunkist, it's looking very battered. And then the Kevin Aquan um, Sculpting Powder in Medium. There you go, if you wanna see how I managed to squeeze it all in, that all goes into the bottom drawer and then I'll pop this here. Let's go through eyes. So for eyebrows, I just do my Bobbi Brown pencil literally every day along with the Blink Brow Gel, which looks absolutely vile. I'm gonna pop that in there. I think the only two things I wanted to add in for eyes from my previous drawers were the Fairy Drop Scandal Queen Mascara and then this Chanel Quad. So maybe I could pop that in there. Now the eyeshadows that I've got in here right now are the, there's a NARS one in tan lines, which I like, but I do actually find this a bit dark for me right now. So I might pop that back into my drawers. I feel like that's more of an evening color for me. Uh, but I am gonna put the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Betty. I mean, look, yeah, I get a lot of use out of that. And also the Pale Barley Eyeshadow by Burberry. I mean, yeah, I've hit pan. The It Cosmetics Tightline Mascara is fab, especially when I've had my eyelash 
tint and lift it on because it just leaves my lashes looking really natural and just gives them a nice amount of like volume and separation so getting that done next week so I'm going to pop that back in there this is fab the um, Clinique Lash Power Flutter to Full Mascara. It's like one of those ones where you twist it. But having two mascaras in there already, I probably don't need this in there as well right now. So I'll retire that for now. Eyeliners, I've got the Groundbreaker one by MAC. That's going back in. And then also the MAC Chromographic Pencil. This is just the nude one in case I'm looking really grim and red in the eye area. Right now, I haven't had my lash lift for a very long time. Maybe like three months. It's been quite a while. So I am having to use my eyelash curlers again. So popping those back in there and also the beauty blender tends to kind of sit in there as well. Oh, I've got, I forgot about this, Matte Groundwork Pro Longwear Paint Pot, but actually one of the colors in the Chanel quad is quite similar to that, so I don't feel too upset about it. I mean, look at that one in the top right hand corner. They're kind of gonna do the same thing. My By Terry Lip Balm, I always pop that in there. That always goes in the top corner. And then the lips, I might have to get rid of a few here and put a few away. Oh, Benefit Roller Lash, I forgot about that. I'll pop that back in the big drawers for now. But these are the three things that I wanted to add, so I will pop those in. The Huda Beauty Lip Contour in Bombshell is really pretty, but I'm, like I said, I'm not massively in to my matte lips at the moment, and if I've got the NARS in there, they kind of do quite a similar thing, and actually quite a similar tone, so pop this in the big drawers. Charlotte Tilbury, oh, I am loving Super Cindy. This one is Live It Up, which is more of like a pink, whereas Super Cindy is more of a peach. I think Super Cindy has to go back in because I've been getting a lot of wear out of that recently. The Kate Moss one in my nude, oh that's really pretty too. I'll tell you what, I'll put the Kate Moss one in. This is Chanel Adrian, this is one of my favourite nudes. I'll take that one out but I will pop my lip gloss back in because this is what I tend to wear most days. This is the Clarins in number 7. And let's I go for my Clarins in number 10. Mix it up a bit, yeah. You know what? living life on the edge. And then I've got my Eccentric Molecule, Eccentric O2, that is so hard to say. I just pop that on top, so there you go. That is what the top look looks like. So top, bottom, everyday makeup, done. Oh, fail. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, told you it was long, are you still here? Oh my God, if you're still here, thank you so much. I really appreciate you watching this extremely long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, it wasn't really a makeup declutter in the end. It sort of ended up being more of like a rejig slash getting rid of a few things. Just general makeup collection. So I hope you enjoyed a very long, chatty video <laughs> from me. I'll be back on Wednesday with something a little bit uh, snappier, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. Bye.